Okay, I thought I'd uh, record a little piece here on applications involving parabolas. Applications involving parabolas. Now, I thought um, that I'd that I'd put something together for this, but but evidently not. Um, so here we, here goes. Uh, we have we have done some applications of quadratics. If you remember in the earlier on, in the other chapter on quadratics. Um, rather than parabolas and the graphs of quadratics, we looked at we looked at um, real life examples of quadratics in use, you know, areas and stuff like that. And we looked at um, uh, quadratic equations that come out of real life situations. Um, well, here we're doing the same, but we're sort of doing it in a in a in, with more of a graph focus, a parabola focus. So let's just do an example. Let's pick an example out of the book. I'm looking at I'm looking at um, um, question. Um, right, I'm looking at, say, let's just go to exercise 7F and have a look at question 1. Okay, and in this question it says a ball is thrown upwards from ground level and reaches a height of h meters after t seconds, given by the formula h equals 20t minus 5t squared. So the formula here is h equals 20t minus 5t squared. And you understand that, that um, we've just got a ball being chucked up in the air. Now the thing with with applications of parabolas is that we usually we're often looking at a situation where our axes are now not x and y, but they're 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 sort of applications, real life applications. So rather than x, we have t for time. You see, and h represents height of the ball. And of course, we're not going to have we're not going to have any negative. Um, there are not going to be need for any negative t, are we? Because there's no negative time, and we're not going to have any need for negative h because there's no negative h. Right, this is the ground level. This is the ground, and this is, you know, this is. So that's h. So we only need we only need positive h, and we only need positive t. Now um, uh, we're asked to sketch a graph of the rule for t equals uh, from from naught to four. Okay, so so what we're going to do now is have a look at this. Now this is a is a negative t squared. So we know that any any quadratic is going to is going to either be a Concave down or a concave up. It's going to be one or the other. Now, if it's negative, uh, it's one of these. No, oh, how am I going? It's the other way. Sorry. If it's negative, that's uh, it's one of those. It's going down, and that makes sense because this parabola. Sorry, if you throw a ball up in the air, gravity brings it back down. So parabolas and gravity go together. Um, all right. So for the first four seconds, what happens? Well, at zero, at t equals zero. All right. So at uh, we need to know at t equal to 0, h is equal to, put t equals 0, well, you get 0, don't you? So it starts out here. This is where it's thrown from. Now, at t equal to 4, let's find out at t equals 4, because we're told to graph it from t equals 0 to 4. So at t equals 0, h is equal to 20 times 4 minus 5 times 4 squared. So that's equal to 24 to 80. 5 times, remember, we do the squared first, 5 times 16 is 80, so we're back to zero. So at t equals four, we're back to zero. So what happens? The ball gets straight up in the air, does this nice little um, parabola arch here, comes back to ground under the force of gravity after four seconds. So there's my sketch of the first four seconds. What maximum height does the ball reach? Is the question that we're next faced with. Right, what maximum height does the ball reach? Well, we know that the turning point is there, and the turning point will be after two seconds. Okay, so how do we find out what the height is after two seconds? Well, we're going to go. We're going to go and calculate what h is when t is equal to two. So continuing our little work down here, at t equal to two after two seconds, h is equal to twenty times two minus five times two squared. So that's forty minus five fours are twenty. So h equals twenty. So the height. After so now I know that little that little question mark there, that's a twenty. So at that point there I've got two twenty, and so my height, my maximum height, so therefore, therefore, maximum height is twenty meters. Okay, so there's there's an example of how parabolas uh, can be applied. Um, to solving real life problems, that's what applications. Whenever you see those applications in mathematics, it's applying mathematics to to solve problems in the real world. Okay, just want to have a quick look. Quick look at sorry, look at um, question six, which is to do with a. It's a very pretty typical sort of question. This one, um, right? We've got a river, and we've got a 
um, a farmer that wishes to fence a bit of land and he's got a hundred meters of fencing and he wants to figure out what the width should be so that he's got maximum area right eh? so what we set up right we've got a hundred meters of fencing and what we do is we allow our width to be x all right so allow width to equal x meters now i think um that we're sort of told to do that anyway use the primitive writing expression for the length of the paddock in terms of the width x meters right so what we want to do is use um we want to find out all right, if that's the width then what's this length going to be all right so we've got x here and x here and we started with 100 meters so if you so if you like we started with 100 meters of of, of fencing and we've chopped an x off here and an x off here all right so what is left in here what's that we started with 100 and we took away x and x so we've got 100 minus 100 minus 2x don't we for for the length Okay, you sum that and that and that, you get you get a hundred. Right, so that's our that's our setup. Now our area in here is going to be length times width x by one hundred minus two x. Right, that's pretty straightforward. Um, and that's part B. Part C: decide on suitable values of x. Now suitable values of x, x will have to be greater than zero because otherwise there's no there's no width. There's no We've got no area, but x will have to be less than. Or x can't be can't be greater than 50, can it? Because if it, let's say our width is 51, we've now only got 49 meters left, and I haven't got enough. I haven't got enough for the other for the other width. So that'd be my suitable values of x. Right now, what we're often asked to do with applications questions is to determine suitability. Right, because we're, we're, we're just coming out of theory a little bit and trying to we're applying to real life so just like up here there was no point looking at anything for t values less than zero i mean this graph here for that that keeps going down here but that this is this down here we don't need it doesn't make sense because you know, we are not going into negative time so um you know the algebra doesn't understand the real life situation so we need to we, we need to be smart and apply it to the problem okay so being smart here is saying well x can't be less than zero Right, but it also can't be uh, greater than 50. Okay, um, sketch the graph of a versus x for suitable values of x. Okay, well let's do that. Let's sketch the values. Of, let's sketch for a against x. So that means my I've got an x-axis here and I've got an a-axis here, right? Because this is my y equals a little right? Vertical is a. So area x. Now for suit it says let's have a sketch of this for suitable values of x. Now suitable values here. Uh, between naught and 50 all right and when x equals 50 my area is naught all right because i'm going to up here to 50 and then i've got nothing left as if i chose 50 as my width then i'm just going to have to go 50 the other side i've got no length so i've got a zero area and if i choose zero as my my um x then i've also got zero area so what we've got is all right and, it's, and if you look at the expansion of this so what we're doing is we're graphing a equals all right x 100 minus 2x now if we had a look at the expansion of that it would be 100x minus 2x squared and this tells us doesn't it this tells us that we've got a parabola going down so this is what's going to result um, and this is zero and this value of x here is 50 okay because we had how, how do i know that well if i make a equal to zero and solve zero equals x 100 minus 2x right, that gives me the x-intercepts right, that's that gives me the x-intercepts because why because x-intercepts are found where a equals 0 in this case a equals 0 so we're solving this we make each factor equal to 0 so therefore x is equal to 0 or 100 minus 2x is equal to 0 that's the other factor and solving this 2x is equal to 100 and x is equal to 50 so these are my x-intercepts there and there concave down you see what's happening but we don't go further because we're not going to have negative area we're not going to have negative x so we leave that and we just that's the suitable values of x and that's the relevant part of this parabola okay um, use the graph to determine the maximum paddock area that can be formed well let's use the graph to do that what's what's our turning point going to be because the maximum area is right there at the turning point so what's that value there well i know that value is 25 so my maximum 
right? So maximum area occurs at x is equal to 25. Okay, so uh, therefore area equals 25 by 100 minus 2 times 25, which is 25 times 100 minus 50, which is 50, and that's 1,250 square meters. So that value there, one, oh dear, try again, that value there, 1,250. Right, and this turning point is the point 25, 1250. So that's my maximum area. Um, what will be the dimensions of the paddock to achieve its maximum area? Right, well the dimensions are if x is x is 25, so my dimensions dimensions of paddock. Now the dimensions just mean what are the length and the width. Alright, so that means that we've got um, right, we're just wondering what this is. So we've taken, we found a value of x to be 25, so this is 25 here as my width, and if, I, if my width is 25, then my length is 50 meters. So dimensions of paddock, 50 meters by 25 meters. Okay, so a couple of questions from exercise 7F to help you along with applications. Hopefully they, you found that useful. I'll see you soon.